Welcome to the next part of the introduction section, where we'll explain the organization of and topics presented in this MOOC. This part summarizes the structure of the course, describes what assignments we'll have and how they'll be assessed, and outlines the main topics covered in the course sections. Once we're done with this brief introduction section, the remainder of the course is organized into three sections, which focus on Android concurrency mechanisms and frameworks, Android services, interprocess communication mechanisms and application security, and software patterns for concurrency and inter- and intra-process communication. Each section is composed of modules, which focus on a group of related topics, such as Android concurrency frameworks or interprocess communication patterns. Each module is composed of multiple parts, which cover a particular topic, such as Java semaphores or the Android async task framework. Each part is presented as a single video, roughly 5 to 15 minutes in length. Each part is composed of segments, which are short 1 to 3 minute video clips that focus on one aspect of a topic, such as starting or stopping Java threads. An in-video quiz will periodically pop up so you can check if you've mastered the material covered in the video. If you download the videos and watch them locally on your computer, however, these quizzes won't appear, but some of the questions may show up on the weekly standalone quizzes, which we'll discuss shortly. There will be roughly a half dozen programming assignments, all written in Java using Eclipse. Though you can use other environments, as long as you can support them yourself or with help from other students on the discussion forums, as described in the FAQ. All Java and Android source code for assignments and examples can be downloaded from my GitHub repository, available here. The programming assignments will provide you with a range of experience developing Android applications, services, and frameworks, as discussed here. The first several assignments will give you experience applying and developing concurrency mechanisms. For example, you'll implement simple atomic long and semaphore classes using Java Rantrant read-write locks, Rantrant locks, and condition objects, and then test them in the Java console environment in Eclipse. In the next several assignments, you'll implement part of a multi-threaded ping-pong application that applies gang of four patterns to develop a framework that simplifies porting the application between Android and console configurations in Eclipse. The final assignment is an integrative project that will give you experience applying pattern-oriented concurrency mechanisms and Android concurrency and communication frameworks and security mechanisms to the iRemember application introduced in Professor Porter's MOOC, as described at this link. Quizzes will be entirely auto-graded and programming assignments will be assessed by a combination of auto-grading and peer grading, as discussed in the FAQ. If you're taking this MOOC to get a statement of accomplishment or a verified certificate, then you're required to do the quizzes and or the assignments, which we'll evaluate using the grading criteria described at this link. Naturally, if you want to take this MOOC solely to learn the material and expand your knowledge, you don't need to submit any quizzes or assignment solutions. Now that we've explained the overall course organization, we'll outline the contents of each section. Section 1 covers Android concurrency, which explores tools, techniques, and methods associated with developing concurrent software for mobile devices. After briefly covering the motivations for and challenges of concurrency, this section focuses on concurrency mechanisms, frameworks, and patterns that Android applies and provides to create, control, and terminate multiple threads that run concurrently within a process. Some Android concurrency mechanisms discussed in this section are based on standard Java features, such as threads, synchronized methods and statements, rentrant locks, condition objects, and semaphores. We also cover key Android concurrency frameworks, such as its handlers, runnables, and messages, or hammer framework, and the async task framework. Throughout this section, we'll illustrate by example how concurrent Android applications and frameworks are developed by applying many common patterns documented in popular books and websites. These patterns focus on general object-oriented software decomposition and composition techniques, as well as concurrency, synchronization, and communication mechanisms and protocols. Many patterns appear in the Pattern-Oriented Software Architecture, or POSA book, and design patterns, elements of reusable object-oriented software, 
or Gang of Four book. Section 2 covers Android services, interprocess communication, and application security. Although the activity components covered in Week 2 of Professor Porter's MOOC provide a flexible visual interface for interactions with a user, Android also defines service components, which run in a separate background thread or process. Services don't interact with the user directly. Instead, activities use services to perform long-duration operations or access remote resources on behalf of users, such as downloading files from a server in the cloud. This section examines several types of Android services, including started services that usually perform a single operation and bound services that allow clients to conduct longer conversations with service implementations. Activities and services interact via mechanisms that are optimized for interprocess communication within a mobile device. We cover several Android interprocess communication mechanisms in Section 2, including intents, which are passed when an activity or service is started, and messengers, which enable message-based communication across processes. We also cover the binder object-oriented remote procedure call mechanism and the Android interface definition language that simplifies Java application access to the binder communication capabilities. Section 2 also focuses on Android application security, where we first describe Android's security model and explain some of its risks and limitations. We then discuss various tools, techniques, and methods for building more secure Android applications, which is a particularly important topic these days. Section 3 covers patterns for concurrency and inter- and intra-process communication that are applied in Android. The patterns we cover all come from the pattern-oriented software architecture books, which document fundamental concurrency and communication patterns. For example, Android applies the monitor object pattern to implement the linked blocking queue class in the Java Util concurrent package. It applies the thread-specific storage pattern to ensure only one looper is created per thread. It applies the command processor pattern to enable code in a background thread to post a runnable command that's enqueued and processed later in the user interface thread. Android also applies this pattern to its intents service, which handles asynchronous requests, expressed as intents, on demand in the background thread of a service. It applies a variant of the active object pattern to enable a client in one thread to send messages to a handler running in another thread. It applies the half-sync, half-async pattern to allow one or more background threads to block synchronously while processing long-duration operations and then pass the results via a synchronized queue to the user interface thread, which only performs short-duration, non-blocking operations. Finally, it applies the broker pattern to support object-oriented remote method calls between activities and services running in different processes. Naturally, these fundamental patterns are not limited to Android or mobile device programming. So learning them will not only make you more fluent with the topics we cover in the mobile cloud computing with Android specialization, but they'll also provide you with a solid foundation for programming concurrent and network software in other platforms. In summary, the topics in this MOOC cover a range of Android concurrency mechanisms and frameworks, services and interprocess communication mechanisms, and application security models, as well as patterns that guide the design of Android mechanisms, frameworks, and applications. After watching the videos, completing the assignments, and participating in the online discussion forums, you should be able to recognize the inherent and accidental complexities involved with developing concurrent software that communicates securely between processes and threads. Likewise, you'll understand how pattern-oriented software architecture and framework techniques can and cannot help to alleviate these complexities. You'll also learn how to apply patterns and frameworks to develop reusable and resilient concurrent applications and services using Java programming language features and Android middleware. Finally, if you follow up on all the links referenced on the slides, you'll know where to find additional sources of information on how to program mobile applications and services on Android handheld systems. We analyze lots of Android software throughout this MOOC, so you'll need a solid understanding of Java to follow along. Much of this code comes straight out of the Android open source release, which is available at this link. This link also provides several pattern-oriented applications 
that demonstrate key Java concurrency and interprocess communication mechanisms and frameworks, which we analyze in detail to showcase the applications of patterns and frameworks in the Android development environment.